everybody. So this is going to be an interesting video. Uh, we are going to be making the milk paint. So I'm going to kind of show you all the utensils you're going to need real quick. So you're going to need dip a lot of different cups. That way we can separate not only the colors, but also do, uh, do a couple other things. You're going to need a big bowl. Make sure it's not metal because metal will do something very weird to your guys' things. You're going to need some hydrated lime or uh, it's also called calcium hydroxide. You're also going to need some wonderful cheesecloth as well as a, uh, let me, sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to make this workable, but as long as, as well as a mesh strainer and a wooden spoon. So I'm going to kind of face you guys to our sink here and we are going to kind of go over step by step of what we are going to do. It's going to be a little bit odd and this video is going to be uh, probably really frustrating to look. I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to try my best to make it into something to where you guys can use and visually see what we are doing. Let me kind of lift this up a little more and hopefully this will help get you guys at a good angle so you can view it a little bit better. I'm trying to do it all as best as I can. Those are some pallets in the sink, so I'm just gonna remove it so we can use. Um, so I'm gonna kind of take our bowl here. As you can see, your milk needs to look similar to this, where the oil and the cork here is separated. Yes, it looks really, really disgusting, but that is what we are going to do. I'm gonna kind of open this real quick because I think the juices are gonna kind of pour out and I just wanna be careful. Uh, make sure you guys are doing this in some sort of sink so that it doesn't make a nasty mess. And what we are going to do is you are going to open up your cheesecloth. So you're gonna open it up. I'm gonna put my strainer, I'm gonna kind of move this, put this into our range. Put my strainer kind of a little bit over here and like how the video on the other uh, the other video that I posted to give you an idea of what we're doing, you want to kind of generously make sure that the cloth goes a little bit over at least most of the edging to your actual strainer. Just to be a little bit wary and careful uh, because well, especially if you have a strainer like mine where it's a little bit harder to kind of deal with, you can kind of do this. I would suggest maybe two times kind of have a thick enough wrapping so that way the water uh, can go through a little bit easier. It doesn't have to be that thick. But as you can see here, I did that. And what you're going to do is just kind of pour it. I'm going to hold the handle so I know that it's kind of good. And just kind of try to squeeze it out if you can. You're probably going to have to squeeze it out. It's going to look really disgusting. And take the time to just let it drain. Ugh, I hate this project so much, but this is actually one of the best paints that I have ever really used in uh, painting. So, ew. I just don't like the noise and the smell that comes out with it, for sure. But, I'm going to slowly let that drain. Those bubbles are quite okay, but you, like I said, you want to make sure that you get all the cork out of the container. Let that drain a little bit. If you need to, you might have to kind of cut it open. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out a way to redo this. But you need all of this work to come out. And I don't know why it's not coming out of here right now. But um, technical difficulties, just a little bit. Oh, there we go. So um, if it kind of is a little bit disgusting to you, just kind of think of it more like a cottage cheese. And it doesn't sound just, it doesn't look or smell just as bad, but uh, this is kind of a similar way as what I think is cottage cheese. Like they kind of let it sit out and separate, so. Or they probably do the same like what the video did, let the vinegar kind of separate it for you so it's not as odd. So, I'm trying to, like I said, make sure you get all the cork 
out of the actual container. Um, what might work is if you can cut it out, but I don't want to grab any scissors. So I'm just going to try my best to kind of, oops, uh, make sure that if it falls over that you grab it because every piece is going to be needed. So I'm just kind of shaking it out. I'm probably just going to kind of come in here, get my hands on a little bit on the dirty side. Just kind of, kind of smells like Greek yogurt. A very odd Greek yogurt smell. Okay. Okay, so once you have the cork all onto your cheesecloth, you're gonna kinda wanna rinse it out. Kinda like take a little bit of a smooth um, right here. Kinda take the time to, if you feel the need to, grab a cup, fill it up, and just kinda slowly rinse it out. Oops, you wanna kinda make sure that, if it's like me, make sure that the edges especially here so that way we can kind of just slowly rinse all the excess oil and things off. If you have to, make sure you just kind of grab the edges at this point. Uh, you can definitely do it this way too, where you grab the edge to a bag, let all the juices kind of soak through. I'm going to put my bowl to the side. Kind of squish out some of the water and the juices. Take the time to really so your quark with some water, I'm trying to kind of get it into frame. I'm sorry if I actually got it out of frame. Just kind of give it a little bit of a squish squish. I'm gonna kind of rinse out this bowl real quick because it, it's probably gonna have some icky juices. You kind of want to, uh, kind of want to rinse the cork about two to three times, especially if you're using uh, the vinegar method where you let it soak in vinegar for a couple of hours till it separates. And there we go. Uh, make sure that you're not squishing it too much of the water out because it's going to be hard to get a lot of stuff out of the cheesecloth. So once you have the cheesecloth prepared or all the done part of the cork, you're going to unravel it and stick the cork to, or take it off, I'm sorry, take it off of your cheesecloth. And what you're gonna do is you can use a spoon or you can kind of like slowly kind of rake off some of this excess cork from the cheesecloth. All right, so now that I have this done, I'm gonna kind of move it over here and I'm gonna kinda wash my hands real quick and then I'll move the camera to where we need to be. Uh, I'm drying, excuse me, I'm in the classroom trying to get this to where we want it to be. Ooh. I'm so sorry. I'm new to this. Uh, so, let me try to anchor this a little bit better so you guys can see. So what we are going to do next let me try to do that and angle it right. So what we're gonna do next is, I'm sitting on some pellets. I'm gonna kind of move the cork to the side. I'm gonna grab a cup and I have some calcium hydroxide here. What we're gonna do with the calcium hydroxide is we're gonna do a little bit of a ratio. So I'm going to kind of add, let me see if this is in frame for you, I'm going to add some of the calcium hydroxide around, around that much. Um, typically not too much, especially since we're doing half a gallon. In the other video, she's using a gallon, so it's going to be different. And I'm going to add some water to it. And I'm going to measure it by eye. That's a little bit more than... So you want it to be pretty much equal. Still looks a little more. All 
All right, that looks about good. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour it together. I'm just gonna take a palette knife real quick and I'm just gonna mix them together to make this consistency. We might need a little bit more because I wanna make sure that there is enough for the quark. But um, you definitely wanna make sure that everything is thoroughly mixed. You know, try to thoroughly mix it as best as you can. If you see that it's not mixing, that the insides still have some sort of powder residue, you can add a little splash more of water and it should work. Just think of this a little bit like chemistry. We're gonna have a lot of mixing and a lot of measure and uh, think of it also too, it's kind of a little bit like baking. Sorry for the noise, I don't like it either. Um, let me take the time to really mix it, really get those edges worked through. I'm just tilting it to make sure that the edges aren't clumped and what you're going to do is you're going to take your fork and you're going to uh, pour it in when you have enough it looks like i'm going to need just a little more uh, so like i said this is a little bit like chemistry so you're going to take some time to kind of really pour it in Ooh. Uh, i would say use around half a cup but since i don't have any measuring cups um, I'm just kind of eyeballing it a little bit. But you want to use, because uh, typically in the normal gallon, you're going to be using around a cup. So you want to limit that by half. So I would use like half a cup. So there's our mixture. It should look kind of like milk, um, the consistency we're looking for. And once you have it all thoroughly mixed, what you are going to do is you're going to pour it into your quark. And then what you're going to do is you are going to mix it together with a wooden spoon. And it should help dissolve. Uh, let me lift you up and show you. It should kind of dissolve as time goes on. If you have to add more of the mix, probably going to have to add more. But it, it is definitely dissolving as time comes on. Gonna need to probably add a splash more of water. Like I said, just kind of play with it as you go for our class here. And sometimes you have to let it rest for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, you might need to add a little bit more powder and a little, I, I need to add a little bit more powder because it's not the consistency that I'm looking for. And like I said, it's because we, uh, I don't have any measuring cups with me. So I'm kind of trying to eyeball it. And as you can see, the hydrated lime really lets the cork kind of dissolve a little bit. You're probably just going to need a ton of water too, because I added more. Take some time to let that sit. Okay, so um, typically you would let this sit for about 15 minutes, but I quite don't have a lot of time. So I wanna make sure that you can kind of see more step by step. So once you guys uh, do that for, let it sit for 15 minutes, it really, really does help bring out, uh, helps these little things dissolve. But uh, like I said, we're just gonna kind of quickly skip ahead to what we're going to do. So let me kind of set this up again angle this to where we need 
um, as best as I can. I know this really sucks and I'm very bad at this right now. Uh, but let me remove that once again. Uh, I'm going to kind of put the cheese or the grater there and I'm going to strain it just one time right now um, so that way Oh, actually, you know what we can do instead? Well, just prepare that for in a minute because what we are going to do is I'm going to show you how to add the pigment. I am sorry. Like I said, this is a little bit more difficult for me to kind of remember the process and how we're going to do it. Ugh. This is how it's going to be. I'm sorry. <laughs> Typically, I would probably edit this and do this, but I'm trying to make sure that you guys have a great view and that it's working. So... I'm going to kind of move this to the side for right now because we don't quite need this yet. And you're going to have a couple cups. So right now I'll just have three cups. And you're going to do the same exact thing. You're going to choose your pigment. You're going to pour some pigment in there. I'm going to choose this yellow. Make sure there's a generous amount. Uh, that way when you're using it for your painting you have enough in that way it's not translucent so you kind of want to really be aware of that some of it will come out better than others let me try to get the rest of this since it's since it's done and i'll actually just use this bright pink we're gonna kind of uh these are dry pigments that i have this is mica powder so it's not gonna look as bright as mine but if you have Whatever object, uh, whatever types of materials you have. So, like I said, the chalk pastel would work great. Sidewalk chalk might would work a little bit. Uh, you can do food coloring. So, whatever you can get your hands on, that's what you can use. Next, I'm gonna kind of add equal parts of water to each one. So, I'm gonna kind of, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Like I said, equal parts here. This is going to be very watery. And that one I didn't quite add as much. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edge of the paintbrush, stir it, um, kind of wipe it off so I'm not cross-contaminating. Stir. Um, kind of try to also get the edges and really take the time to make sure all the powder is included into the water. I'm gonna mark it and same with the yellow. Okay, so I thought I thought we could do it all in one, but I forgot I'm going to be doing different colors. So we're going to turn it back around, and we're going to take a quick minute to do the cork and separate the cork for a second. Oh my, this is how my day is going to be. Okay. So, there we have it. What you're going to do is make sure that you're pouring, oops, it's not working quite well as I thought. You're going to kind of, uh, I'm just gonna kind of lift it, but um, you're gonna need another bowl or something. I, let me see if I can find a bowl. Uh, da -da. Um, let me see what I have real quick. Um, I have a bowl in the back, so I'm going to try to go grab it for a minute. Apologize for the un- for the, just the crazy way I'm doing this. Didn't expect to quite do it that way. But uh, actually I'm just gonna kind of drape the cheesecloth over and 
we're just going to drain it like so. Uh, all of the edges are over the bowl, so we are okay. This isn't sticking, tripod isn't quite sticking to the tool that I bought very well. What you're gonna do, you're gonna gather up the, che the ends of the cheesecloth. I'm gonna take this out. And I'm gonna just kind of go through, squish this binder into Squish this binder right here into our paint. Okay, so once we have that, I'm gonna put this over here on the table. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Double washing my hands because it smells. Oops. Okay. So I'm going to kind of pause this real quick and I'll be right back and we'll start off with the next step. So, sorry. Uh, now that we have that done and over with, I'm going to use three cups and I'm going to separate that wonderful milk juice that we have and that we have put in a bowl in between these three cups. Since I'm doing three different pigmentations. I'm gonna do this in the sink in case I spill, which I suggest you guys do too. So one, two, and then let me kind of move this over. Three. And then we're gonna turn you over on this side. Uh, let me move this right here. And I'll show you how to mix them both together. So let's turn you over this way. <coughs> it's like, like powder stuck in my throat. So, now that we have the three nuts in, what you're gonna do is you're gonna kinda pour in each to each part of your paint. Uh, for some of them, like this yellow, I know I'm gonna need more pigmentation. Especially, uh, be careful, because yellow can be very opaque. So you want it to be as you want it to be very bright, you're going to have to add a lot of pigment to it. So I'm just going to take the end of this paintbrush real quick and thoroughly mix it. I'm going to grab the paper towel and clean after every stir so I don't cross contaminate the pigments to keep it as accurate to what I'm using. This pink is very, very bright and colorful. And I really love this copper, but um, I have some mica pigment that has this metallic sheen to it. So it will have some sort of metallic effect. And wipe. So, oops. Now that I have all my pigments, stirred and mixed, we are going to do a quick paint swatch test. So for those of you as saw in our class, our paint swatches are going to be uh, something so we can see what we are working with, how we are working with them. I'm going to open up this container and pull out a piece of watercolor, contain uh, watercolor paper. I'm going to kind of eye to make sure you can see my paper. So I'm going to take, um, this is kind of a harder stepper brush. So I'm going to take some right here and I'm just going to play with it. It's, depending on how much you use and what you do, it's going to be a little bit of a watery consistency. If you want to kind of rinse it. Rinse it so that way you can 
see how the different colors are, but it will be this more like water consistency unless you have a thicker um, amount. If you have more pigment than uh, water, you know, it's going to be a little bit better. But for the most part, every time I make casing, it is this kind of watercolor tempura type of material. And let's try this yellow. Okay, it's not that bad. So it's kind of what you would use for... Like, it's kind of like our liquid watercolors we have, but not as much pigment. So there you guys have it. This is a little bit of a step-by-step -step on how to be able to make the casing. Hopefully this helps. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please, please, please just let me know. And I will be able to, uh, I will be able to help you on Google Hangout meet link in my office. Remember, my office hours are 1 to 45 to 3 p.m. for my lovely students who are asking for that. But thank you guys so much for having, uh, <laughs> having the willingness to work with such an interesting and odd way to paint. I shall see you guys next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.